You're about to get into it. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. If this is your first time seeing my face, I am Jaleesa, your friendly neighborhood lawyer. And for all my returning subscribers, welcome back my alien allies. It's nice to have you here. Welcome to another episode of the Alien in the Courtroom series, a series aimed at helping young entrepreneurs and business professionals at making better legal decisions for their brands. Today's video is all about copyright law and particularly about the use of fonts. I actually had someone at me in an Instagram live about the use of fonts whether she or he would have been able to use fonts that they find online for their own fashion company or within their logo within their company art so we're gonna cover that in this video it's a tricky topic something that's even difficult for me to understand as well <laughs> and you might not like what I have to say, <laughs> but here's the legal truth about it. As always, it is important that I stress that these videos are intended for educational purposes only. In no way should you consider me to be your personal lawyer. And if you have any questions that are specific to your brand, you should definitely seek outside counsel. And just a shameless plug, I am wearing my own clothing line today. My justice is served tie. It might be hard to see under all these bright lights. It is a baby pink tie with the justice scales pattern on it. It is available in a darker blue and a black. And it's great for anyone who's in the legal profession, whether you're a paralegal, pre-law, law, school student, the lawyer, go ahead and pick up one of these ties or go ahead and gift your favorite lawyer bay one of my ties. It is available at www.alienintheroom.com and it is a part of our Alien in the Courtroom collection. When we're discussing fonts, we are mostly talking about copyright law. There's a little bit of design patent law at the end there, but mostly we are discussing copyright law today. Right now, I'm going to go ahead and give you a refresher on what copyright law is. Go ahead and check out this scene from a previous episode of Alien in the Courtroom series. Copyright law is concerned with the protection of original works of authorship. This can be pictorial, graphical, or sculptural. It can be literary, dramatic, or musical, audiovisual. Any original work of authorship is usually protected by copyright law. Poetry, novels, movies, songs, computer software, architecture, Sculptural can be the Statue of Liberty. It can be any statue or that you have lying around your house. It can be the, the words that are on your website, things of that nature. And typically you have an automatic copyright in a work of art as soon as the work is fixed. Fixed also has specific legal definitions, but for these purposes, we're going to say that fixed means that the work has been put in a tangible medium of expression. If you have a song, as soon as you put it into your voice memos in your phone, then the song has a copyright. Or if it's a painting or drawing, as soon as you put it onto a canvas or a piece of paper, it is fixed in a tangible medium of expression. Or maybe you're writing a book. As soon as you put it onto paper or maybe even into your laptop, it is fixed in a tangible medium of expression. Okay, so that was just a little refresher on what copyright law is and what it protects, okay? Now that we've gotten that out of the way, we can talk a little bit about how this applies to fonts. Because copyright law protects original works of authorship, such as writings, artwork, music, movies, all of that good stuff, it also protects computer software. And that's where today's topic comes into play. When we're discussing copywriting fonts, first we need to make sure that we get some legal definitions down. We need to learn the difference between font and typeface. A font is a computer file or program when used digitally that informs your printer or your computer display or whatever display that you are using, how a letter or character is supposed to be shown. A typeface is a set of letters, numbers, and other symbols whose forms are related by repeating certain design elements that are consistently applied, which are sometimes called glyphs, used to compose text or other combinations of characters. 
So put more simply, the typeface refers to the way a set of letters or numbers appears, whether it's on a page or on a computer monitor. The actual shape of the letters and characters is called typeface. For example, Times New Roman is a typeface, but the software that tells your printer how to print the A in Times New Roman is the font. That's really tricky. That's really technical. The actual shape of the letters and characters is the typeface. And the software that tells your printer how to print an A in Times New Roman is the font. For example, Helvetica equals the typeface, but whether it's bold, italic or regular, that's the font. Under United States law, typefaces and their letter forms or glyphs are considered utilitarian objects whose public utility outweighs any private interest in protecting their creative element. Generally, copyright law in the United States does not protect typefaces, but fonts may be protected as long as the font qualifies as a computer software or program. When we're talking about copywriting fonts, Fonts themselves are technically copyrighted as the computer software that you download from online is put onto your system. So that software is copyrighted, but the actual stylistic elements of the font cannot be copyrighted. The same way that you can't protect the cut of a garment, you cannot protect the, the way that the letter A looks because it is considered something that everyone needs access to. And it probably comes a point where there's so only so many ways that you can make an A still look like an A, but look a little bit stylistically different. Now, I had a question on Instagram Live that asked me whether the fonts that you receive on Microsoft Word or the fonts that are on Canva and Printful, for example, are free for commercial commercial use and I would say it's a little bit touch and go with that. I originally thought that fonts that are available on Microsoft Word are just all free for commercial use if you would like to do that but it seems like you may have to go ahead and, and check online for the info of whether you can use that font in your logo or in your fashion line. I would assume still that if you're using a website like Printful who offers fonts for you to make t-shirts with I would assume that those fonts for the most part must be commercially free but still you want to do your due diligence to confirm that but canva especially i guess because canva is usually seen for something that's maybe of more personal use it does not guarantee that the fonts that are available on canva are actually good to go for commercial use you have to verify and do a little bit of research into the font and see if you can find a license online so you really do have to be careful when you find these fonts online i know on defont.com you can find basically copies of really popular fonts out there for example if you want a font that looks like the barbie font or you want a font that looks like pepsi or anything like that you are possibly going to be able to find copies of that font online and for the most part I would assume that those authors have already copied the software from the original or at least tried to mimic the software of the original font of the original Pepsi. So I would assume now it's just a level or a chain of copying. That artist copied that big company so now you're using that artist's copy. I think fonts in general are just very hard to police and I would assume especially so in the fashion world in an industry where it's not so easy to police and check out what everyone is doing because there's so much out there a lot of things can go under the radar that possibly shouldn't but that's not to say that if your design blows up and your shirt or whatever design that you have goes viral and the artists recognize their font on your shirt that doesn't mean that you can't be in trouble so the best way to really protect yourself is to go ahead and purchase the font from wherever you found it i'm not sure if the people who have created copies of like pepsi or copies of barbie are asking for a commercial license because i would assume that they are also in the wrong for copying the original font because we've also discussed in this series before is that the true test of whether something is original or copied or whether you significantly change something to the point that it is entitled to copyright protection is to do the test the ordinary person the plain view kind of test whether a person an ordinary person can look at both pieces side by side and think that they are not one in the same 
if that person thinks that they two look alike then most likely one has infringed on the other when you find those barbie fonts and those pepsi fonts on the font.com or any other font website the point is for it to look very close to the original font that is meant to mimic so i would assume they are infringing on someone else's copyright as well so i'm not sure how they can actually sell that font to another person and i believe there is a loophole online not that i'm versed in this technical talk but i believe people try to trace the original font and then create their own software with their tracing and that to them means that the font is now original However, that's just for copyright law. There might be a way for artists or authors of fonts to get around this if they have a design patent. Just because a company cannot copyright the stylistic features of their font doesn't mean that they don't have any type of protection on that font at all. That company, that artist can still go ahead and file for a design patent. And I already discussed design patents in a previous video in episode one. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a clip right here for you guys to learn what a design patent is again. Design patents refer to the ornamentality of an object. And this is where it can kind of get a little bit blurry with copyright law because copyrights also protect ornamentality as well. But there are key differences. Design patents have to have an element of novelty and non-obviousness that copyright doesn't have to have. Copyright exists automatically when the work is created into a tangible medium, but for design patents, design patents are only available if you register them with the USPTO, which is the United States Patent and Trademark Office. Design patents take a longer time to obtain than copyright. Filing a copyright is a lot cheaper than it is to register a design patent. And design patents only last 15 years from the date of issue. Whereas a copyright lasts the length of your lifetime plus 70 years. Some famous examples of design patents are the Statue of Liberty, as I stated before, the curvy, shape of the coca-cola bottle back in 1915 ornamental designs on jewelry automobiles furniture as well as packaging and fonts and computer icons stuff of that nature can be designed patentable so a person an artist can go ahead and file for a patent registration with the USPTO, the United States Patent and Trademark Office, for the stylistic typeface of their design. From the little bit of research that I have done online, it seems like the USPTO has granted design patents for over 1,500 typefaces. And particularly, design patents last for 14 years. So who's to say that that new font that you're seeing on thefont.com or whatever website you're using isn't in the process of being patented? and you attempting to use it on your fashion line or on your logo could be infringing on that artist's rights. I would assume that the Coca-Cola and all the other Pepsis, they've been in business for so long, so most likely their design patent has expired by now. Just because Coca-Cola or Pepsi or Disney or Barbie <laughs> whatever popular font you can think of just because their design patent may have run out does not mean that their copyright has expired as well copyright lasts for the length of the author's life plus 70 years and technically there's a special rule where copyright can last even longer if you are a company holding on to it so they might own the underlying font and if whatever font that you found is meant to mimic that font you can still get in trouble so that's just a quick explanation of how fonts really work in the legal atmosphere a lot of these fonts are available online for your free personal use and then when it you start to use it commercially that's when you can run into trouble give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video leave a comment down below if you have any further questions share this video with an entrepreneur he or she is bound to learn something from my alien in the courtroom series help them out subscribe if you haven't already and go ahead and shop my clothing line <laughs> i have items for anyone in the law profession i have items for black greeks i have items that are pro-black and i have items for the eclectic eccentric woman in general you are bound to find something that you like both men and women actually bound to find something that you like and i will talk to you guys in the next episode bye <laughs>